Welcome to the Bureau. My name is Dr. Restolin. No. My name is Liliana, also known as the Transfiendling. And today we're going to get back into Control. Now, I do realize that I said I probably wasn't going to get an episode of Control out this week. Um, thankfully, my girlfriend woke up feeling much better today, so uh, she said that she's going to be fine for herself for like half an hour or so. So, I'm going to go ahead and see if we can't figure out what is going on with, uh, you know, the brother. Search for Dylan in the maximum security cells. It looks like I need to go this direction, but maybe I'm on the wrong floor. I have done a tiny bit of just exploration since last time, but not much. Which floor was it? There was an elevator. <laughs> Also, exciting news! This is probably... So I know I mentioned of The Witcher. This is probably going to be the last episode of Control. I think this might actually be the only episode of Control recorded here. Because I had, uh... Backup, or not backup, but like built up footage, I think. I don't know, it's been a while since I've looked at my own content. There's the little thing. Yeah, it's P6. So we have to go up to P4, and then we'll head up to P6 from there. Also, I do apologize. I tried putting up a sign. Uh, I'm kind of in like a living room type area, uh, and because there's not a whole lot of room here, so my girlfriend's roommates might come back. It might be loud. I put up a sign asking them to be quiet, very politely of course, because I do everything politely. Um, but just want to give you a heads up if there's like a, a cut in footage, hopefully it won't be during a cutscene. Um, knock on wood. But uh, so if there's a cut in the footage or if there's like noise during a cutscene, that's what's happening. So it's the P containment P6 cell. And there was a... There was a, like a map or something somewhere that kind of said, hey, here's what the different floors were. I don't remember where that was, though. Uh, this is the fortified containment unit, though, so perhaps it was here. Now, that's where we went to get the power. Also, yes, at the, for anyone who didn't doesn't remember, at the end of the last episode, we had just gotten, if I'm, if I'm remembering correctly, the fun little flight power, which is really fun, and I like it a lot. P6 cell. That's where I need to go. Did we find that somewhere else? No, we saw a document about that. I think I already commented on that too, but that's fine. P6. Something also lit up red over there. Oh, Frank, nice to see you again. Very quiet. Why are you so quiet? I did get the, uh, I think I might have gotten that off camera. I did get the charge fire mode, which is useful. Can't do that from here. Oh. That's startled me. me. Jesse. I can hear you. I don't know where you're talking to me from, but I can hear you. Uh, I'm going to presume it's this next room somewhere. Oh, Floyd. Oh, Void. I still think Dylan's the source of the hiss. Yeah, that looks totally, totally trustworthy. Uh, I'm not scared or 
doubting anything at all. I have to see my, brother. my brother's keeper. The new mission, face of the enemy. I don't have level 6 clearance yet. Can Jesse see the whole, like, Jesse written in blood thing? Dylan Faden Observation. Federal Bureau of Control. Dylan Faden Obser Daily Observations. Confidential. 9.30 a.m. Breakfast is brought. 10.54 a.m. Gets out of bed, uses toilet, returns to bed. 11.57 a.m. Asks for television to be turned on, staff do so. 12 p.m. Lunch is brought, breakfast is removed. 12.02. Eats lunch. 12.38. Or 2.38. Uses toilet. 4.03 p.m. Begins talking to self. Recording speech is not possible due to noise from television. 4.07. Becomes upset. Throws lunch tray at glass. 4.09. Sedated. Crew cleaned the cell. Television is turned off. 6.12 p.m. Comes to. Asks for television to be turned on. Staff refuse. 6.16. Sleeps. Asterisk. Television privileges were refused due to hostile behavior. Well then. Cool. There's gonna be a boss fight in here, isn't there? There isn't some sort of fight. I will be surprised. Hmm. We don't trust this. Jesse. I'm expecting no, but I'm curious. Okay, that's what I expected. The red lights keep tripping me up, though. Can't get rid of the red lights. This looks like somewhere that a control point would be found. Well, haven't found a control point, but did find this. Which is always useful. Also, I'm excited because depending on uh, delivery speeds, this may be the last episode recorded without... or, like, with this audio setup because as I mentioned before I believe I have a friend who uh, upon hearing one of my audio issues just sent me like not an ungodly at will an ungodly amount an amount I'm very thankful for but just sent me enough money to get like a really decent mic and I'm like as hey, thank you so I'm gonna be getting myself a decent mic Okay, anything, anything at all up here that I need to be concerned about? Okay, it's not letting me levitate higher, so I'm guessing no. Also, unfortunately, I can't explore higher in the main area, the, like, main containment area, for the same reason. It just, it won't let me levitate any higher. Which makes me really sad, because I wanted to explore all the containment floors, because, of course I do, because... This is an SCP game. As far as I'm concerned, we are in the foundation. The objects of power and altered items are just different types of anomalies. And all of them are SCPs. Because they sure as void behave and are described like them. Okay, it doesn't look like there's anything else in here, so I'm just going to head out. If there is, feel free to leave something down in the comments or, you know, if you're on the Discord, feel free to shout out Shout it out to me on the Discord. That we'll come back to once we have higher access. Because unfortunately I can't just blast through, like there's not glass holding that in place or anything. Or keeping me from there. Because if we're just glass, I could just blast it apart like I did in the other area. I also, five bajillion percent, don't trust this whole... Oh, he's turning himself in. That's sketchy. Admittedly, it's only sketchy to me because I've seen the whole, you know, my name written in what appears to be blood on his cell floor. But I'm still incredibly sketchy. Or like, you know, suspicious of him. My brother is acting a bit sus, as the kids might say. Can I get in there? Pretty please? No? Okay, fine.
Oh, right, abilities. I have more points to spend. Uh, seize an additional enemy. Seize duration. Levitate duration, shield strength. Ten to melee damage. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember legitimately the last time I used melee, so pass on that. I think I'll go with the seize thing because then I only need one more point to get the seizing a side enemy, and that sounds useful. Also note to self, don't forget that we can now seize enemies. This is such a bad idea, I don't know why she was- Okay, I'm, I'm expecting it's because of his anomalous properties. I don't know what his anomalous properties are, but I'm assuming that his anomalous properties are why she would, didn't- Like, wasn't panicking. Cuz... Um... Yeah. Arish, if they're in there and we go around that way. Everything's really quiet to me, I don't know why. New mission, put a recording on. Uh... Pardon? Yeah, it's fine. Oh yeah, I have a new thing from, um, Ati. Uh, talk to the plants. T ask Arish about the jukebox token. Okay. I'll do that after we find out more about the brother. I found this token. Any idea what it does? Uh, that is a jukebox token. Okay. Oh. A uh, jukebox, I assume. Does it have any good songs? <laughs> nope. Just the one record. Hey, be careful turning it on, though. When it's playing, you get a free trip to formation. Uh, formation? That sounds ominous. Why is it sent you there? The Bureau has been wondering that for years. I mean, it's just a pile of rocks built by God knows who. But well, researchers have confirmed it's in the same threshold as the quarry. No one's ever been able to map the physical route to the formation of the So it's in the quarry. You just don't know where. Pretty yeah. Much. We only send in annual expeditions to the formation. Checkups. Okay. okay. The the day that this uh. I can go in and take a look. I'd appreciate that. The jukebox is kept just past the security people over there. Put in the token and go to ride. Oh! That's the thing. We found this before. I believe we've, we've also talked about all these before. Me too. You're not the only one who lives in your home. Uh, missions. Oh, that's... Okay. Wow, name of blindness. Uh, I need to go to speak with to Emily. Alright, do we have any new, uh, things we can build? Oh, jukebox tokens? Uh... Okay, apparently we need to go there a lot, question mark? Uh, do I have enough to upgrade that? No, I need more shifting fragments, which is fine. Uh, upgrades to gun modes I don't like to use. If I get those little notifications that are like, oh hey, kill X enemies with this sort of weapon, I just go back to executive and use it there because I don't like using those weapon modes. Okay! Here we go! Alright. You seem pointedly not dead, which is a surprise. Timeline of events. Uh, is it here? The timeline of event. Timeline of events. To, to examine the invasion's timeline of events for possible patterns in his behavior. Establishing a timeline is difficult at present because of lack of reliable communications between bureau sec sectors and Seth. Apologies. Preliminary models indicate Ground Zero of the invasion is located within the executive sector. Once it becomes possible to interview surviving personnel, pinpoint the exact location should be feasible. Pinpointing the exact location should be feasible. Other outstanding questions that a timeline may help answer. How did the Hiss get past the internal lockdown? How does Hiss resonance advance through space, deliberately or uniformly? What is their ultimate goal? The outside world, a cross-dimensional destination? Refer to X for full report. I don't know why I said X instead of redacted, but here we are. Speech analysis? 
Summary, if we understood the Hiss to be force based on vibration and resonance, then perhaps their incantation, which is now agreed, which is now the agreed upon term for their vocalizations, is an effort to express the resonance using human vocal cords and speech. Would there be differences if the incantation were recited in a different language? The most common word used is want. Interestingly, every usage of the word is attributed to a you. He wants to listen. He wants this to be true. You must want these waves to drag you away. Are we the you the Hiss are referring to? Does the Hiss believe humanity, possibly all non-Hiss life, wants to join it, to be consumed by it? Is that its goal? The second most used words are through and time. Is this possibly the Hiss stating how they arrived here, or an indication of its age? There is a clear intention in the words dismissing the incantation as nonsense, as some of my colleagues recommend, is beyond idiotic. Refer to redacted for full report. Interesting. Okay. So, uh, again, with the SCP references, um, this is starting to sound like an SCP-610 type thing, except for instead of a, like, physical virus, it's a psychological virus, or like a psionic thing, which is interesting. Linguistic ability. Oh, avoidance stars. Researchers were sent to transcribe the recursive chants repeated by the Hiss entities. In the interest of safety, this was done with the non-aggressive floating Hiss entities. However, no distinction between this repeating phrase and the one repeated by the more violent Hiss entities has been observed. What is the purpose of this repeating string of words? Is this how the Hiss corrupts individuals? Does the chant produce a physical effect? Is it a message, an incantation? We were able to record a first-hand recitation of the chanting. See the corresponding audio record. Refer to file redacted for full report. Interesting. Uh, do I have a hotline about that? Unread. Control points. We've seen the thing about control points before. Unless this is some like new update. We reach slash tether through control points into the bureau slash house. Nexus slash threshold slash area codes allow for access. You can translocate fast travel constructs through the control points. Okay, that's odd. I don't know if it was part of that audio or not, but I swear I heard things behind me. I'm against a flat wall, so that's interesting. Hey, how are you not dead? After all these years, Dylan is here. I was here all along. How is he? I need to know. He's clearly been affected by the hiss, but it's different than any other manifestation we've recorded. How? It is Polaris. Okay, I got that right. I need to run tests. He seems more in control, more present. I want to see Okay, him. seems my brother. Or is he? Yeah. I have suspicions about this. It's on the upper floor up the stairs. Okay, I need to go. Yeah. I want to meet my brother. I want to meet this AU version of me. Speak with Dylan on the upper level. Uh, I'm guessing it's going to be where the doors are. Yeah. Can I use powers in here? No. Oh, this is going to be a trip. Uh, what? Are you muttering the hiss incantation? I don't trust this. Yeah. That's Dylan. Correct. Can you hear me? Come on, Dylan. I'm here. I found you. Uh. Do you know who I am? No. The director. Say it. Dylan Baden's sister. He's talking in the third person. That's not a good sign. Always a good sign. <laughs> Uh, Trench and Darling made sure of that. I'm Peter Dylan. Oh, 
six. P six. But I'm better now. Uh, hi. Uh. That's the trauma for you. I want to say that. They sound good. They make me feel good. Don't you want to say that too? No. Not really, no. Fuck off, no. You need to help me get this thing out of his head. If he is still in there, if there is anything left, you have to help me. You're doing some Uncanny Valley things. The Bureau brought the slide projector back here. Okay, and what's the slide projector do? Well, this is terrifying. On like a deep existential level. I walk up the hiss. I let it in to get rid of her. The hiss set me free. Polaris you. The Bureau is using you. You are a puppet. You gave us the permission in your regulations. Maybe it's not too late for my brother. He's saying things that we can't hear. Oh. I mean. I'm sorry, what? Bullshit. I saw what the hiss did to Salvador. What it turned him into. Okay, Dylan. I'll go. I want to see the truth for myself. I'll go. But only to look for this life projector. You can help me. We can end this. Well then, uh, how did you get that through this weird setup? I have questions, as usual. Can I still talk to you? Oh, tears and stars. Is this a dream about an odd color? Let's go. Hey! My name was Jesse Dylan Faden. 
Interesting. That is true, technically speaking, about Dylan. But I've only ever met one femme Dylan, personally. Just part of why I changed my name. I think he's saying that they're interchangeable, that either of them could have been in either place. It could be Dylan and Jesse's position, and it could be Jesse and Dylan's position. Question mark? There's some loud noise going on, I don't know what it is. Okay. So essentially you had a dream that you had normal lives. It sounds like, kind of? Say that about control personally. This also has some like weird Lovecraft vibes. Admittedly, I don't know a lot about Lovecraft things, but just the weird dreams and mind things and entities that are larger than human comprehension. This isn't weird or terrifying. More conversations with our corrupted brother. Can we talk? I know, Cinderella. I'm startled too. I just had an interesting dream. Did you now? Oh, shit. <laughs> Mood. That's fascinating, but let's talk about the hiss for yeah? This dream was about the hiss. Well, then let's talk about the dream, perhaps? This is super horrifying. This is like... Oh, I can't remember specifics because I haven't read things, but this reminds me of like... Synopses and like summaries of stories I've read about various cosmic horror things. So it sounds like world domination is the thing? Okay, let's see. Been recording for about 30 minutes. I'll do two more conversations with the brother, and then if he sells more things after that, we'll start into that at the start of the next episode. I mean, I just really want to hear more information. Dylan isn't here, right? Oh, wonderful. This dream, like all dreams now, felt very real. Great! Like Why don't you tell me about it? Reality now feels like a dream. Maybe it's all a dream. Uh, 
So we're all in the Matrix, is what you're saying. I mean, that seems as plausible as anything else given the Bureau slash Foundation. So. <laughs> Mr. Door. Oh, like the the uh, brain claim theory. Fuck cops. Dor said he himself was in all of them at the same time, endlessly shifting between them. Is that Dor the slide projector? That's one, then two. Here we go again. One this more makes me think of SCP-096, I think it is? Let me guess. Dream. Yes. That's so terrifying. I don't know why, but something so subtly terrifying about this whole thing. Yeah, th this is new. You're actively having a dream? Oh. This very dream. He said just now. And repeated it again now. Uh. I'm standing there and watching, and that's all I can do. It's as if I'm trapped there. Okay, that's weird. And that's all I have to say about that dream. Okay, okay. That's good. Is he still in? Is this the hiss playing mind games? I don't know. Oh! Wonderful! Okay, so that happened! Uh, that was really cool. Kinda of fucked up. Um. Oh. Oh, that raises questions. Are we really playing as Jesse? Or are we playing as, like, Polaris? manipulating Jesse. I have so many questions now. Uh, and, and to explain my one comment about the SCP, I forget its exact number, I do apologize, but I want to say it's 96. It's something super early on. And it's essentially, it's a disc that when you put on a mirror it opens a dimension to it. It opens a door to another dimension when you put on a mirror. And th essentially these have been used by an eldritch entity to access multiple worlds to consume and corrupt and arguably destroy them? That part's a bit unclear. And it's... oh, it's terrifying, and the th thought of the hiss spreading like that is terrifying. Though admittedly the hiss and that Mr. Door seem like two separate anomalies. But, oh, void and stars. Oops. I'm so excited. I'm so excited. Oh, I'm so excited to see where this goes. This is going so interestingly. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, okay. But I do need to go ahead and call it. Um, thank you again, everybody, so much for watching, and thank you for your patience. Um, the good news is soon I should have a regular schedule I can be on and recording regularly. I'm still aiming for my upload days to be Tuesdays and Fridays at the same time as normal. They are admittedly earlier for me because I moved to time zones, but that's fine. Um, I've been using California time as like my guide time anyway because of things and research and stuff, so it's fine. So uh, if you are enjoying this and want to help support the channel, uh, check in the description, follow the Kofi link, and if you can, join the subscribers. There's a variety of rewards tiers for how much you donate per month or how much you subscribe for because the rewards are for the subscribers. Uh, if you can't afford that, then one-off donations are also appreciated. Or if you just want to tell other people about the channel because you enjoy it, I appreciate that so much because I can't afford ads right now. So that is in so incredibly helpful to me. 
And until next time, please thank you all so much for, for watching, and please do not forget to be kind to yourselves and one another. And for now, it's time for some very important things. All the thanks in the void to my Voiditsians over on Kofi, Daris, Sarah Senpai, and Jinxed Mutt. If you'd like to join the ranks, head over to Kofi, choose a subscription tier, and enjoy various benefits such as your own customized Discord emoji, the chance to tell me you're a mortal soul, access to the Voiditsian only Discord server, and much, much more. As always, don't forget to hydrate, masticate, and medicate.